we'll start with the groundhog. So the first fly that came to my mind was a fly called the llama. Now, why it's called that, I have no idea. But it's spelled as it the animal. L L A M. Okay. Okay. So, Lama. And Eric Leiser is probably the most known <coughs> proponent of the Lama, but it wasn't his fly. And why it came to be known by him was he came out with a book or two back in the early and, 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 and these are so about how to cure your own, how to catch, how to skin, and how, how to cure your own hides. And that became a, a, a small craze at that time, to the point that a friend of mine at that time stopped the car on a anniversary night of his and in a three-piece suit because him and his wife were going out to dinner in a three-piece suit scraped up a coon and uh, he threw it in a bag and threw it in the trunk in the car they drove east into Burlington and they went to dinner whining and dining and dancing and about one o'clock in the morning they came out, climbed in the car and had to drive home with the windows down because <laughs> <laughs> the stink was so bad and he didn't get anything else that night. <laughs> In fact, not for a few, not, not for a few nights. I gave him an excuse to tie a lot of flies. <laughs> and in fact, I think I still have a, uh, a half of that hide somewhere. In there. Not me, though. I didn't. Do, I wouldn't do that. Uh, although I'm still mad at Len Yust because he wouldn't stop on the way down to, to the, the camp at skills. There were dead deer lying like everywhere and he wouldn't stop. He was scared stiff of the uh, the boys in the in 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 the wide hats. Elliot, <laughs> that's only because you knew about your story about the moose hide. Oh the moose hide. No, I'm not gonna tell all that. I'm I'm not tying no moose flies here. Okay, so the tail. The llama is a streamer of sorts. Tied on a 3x long hook. Uh, this is a number. Oh, a number eight size eight. You can tie them down to four. Uh, down to six, six, I should say. Anyway, that's it, that's it there. So it has a tail of um, grizzly hen and a body of red floss with tinsel, uh, a wing of um, groundhog woodchuck, a hackle of grizzly, a black head. You can paint the eyes on the head or not. It's your call. The cat kind of a pain to do because you have to do the white, let the white dry, put the little black dot in the middle, let that dry, and then you coat the whole thing again with clear cement to to harden it all up and shine up the whole head. So it's a it's a, a a pain in the neck, and I haven't found any peel and stick eyes that that small. So, anyway, how you tie in the tail? <coughs> I've cleaned off all the crap on the base, all the fuzz. You pull out uh, 
the fat ibis on the lower end so that it looks like that. It stands low. Okay, so it stands out square off the quill. Okay, grab the the tip by your thumb and your finger. You put the quill against your thumb. So I'm hold, holding the the the, uh, the whole length flat, holding them out square, and you pull, and everything then becomes square. Which, when you do that, then your tips are all lined up. Um, you get that? If you do it like this, and you grab and you just tear a piece off, they're all stepped up. So that's how you do a hackle tail. Switching ends, forefinger and thumb, middle finger and thumb, turn it around, grab it by the butts. Now I've got the tips going towards the tail. About a hook gap or a little bit more in length. Okay, so it's sized up to length, switch hands, over, over, tied on top to the bend. There you go. The ten insult, this one's number 14, uni. Uh, gold on one side and silver on the other. So, if you've ever wondered how, which side you tie with. Now, this fly was in, actually, this fly was in, invented by a North American native in Wisconsin, I believe. Somewhere back in the on, 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 on east. And apparently he had a little tying shop and a tackle store on the, the, the reserve. And all of the, the white men that um, used to come up to flat eye fish would all stop at his store and he'd sat on them flies. Anyway, this fly he came up with, he got it from an old in, 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 in English book. I don't know if it was called the Lama then or where the name came from, but that's where. And, and it sort of died out until Ungrick um, 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 Lama happened to cotton onto this. So the whole thing is a dilemma. No. Oh. 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 <laughs> okay, so what I do what a crowd. Didn't come. Oh. Originally it had a silver rib. Somewhere through the annals of time it's been switched to a gold rib, so you can tie it either silver or gold. If you want the gold side out, you tie the silver side up, if that makes sense, because you turn, turn it, and which brings the gold side up. So I'll tie it down, but I won't go all the way. I'll leave about a mill or two short of the last tie down spot on the tail. Okay. But now I'm going to go up 
And there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either leave the thread attached and so or to strut ugle with the floss and the thread or you can tie it off the thread start the floss at the at the head of the fly a little a little ways back not all the way up start the floss and you wind back close turns Winding back as smooth as you can. When you get to the tensile, switch it over and take a turn of floss at the back. Okay. Come forward. What that does is lock the tensile in. It's not going to slip off the back back of the body. So now what you want to do is, uh, if you can spin this, if you can spin, there we go. And the floss then starts to flatten out, come up, smooth turns, Attach the thread again. Floss and the thread are tied down at that. Okay. Floss up. Snap the bit off. Tie down the tag end. Now, then, when you go over and you cross, now I'm going to wind this up. Now I've got the gold out. One, two, three. Four, that's better. Five turns. Sixth turn I tie off. Snip that, that off. Okay. Now then, <coughs> groundhogs. This is going to be hard to see, but if, if you confuse, you can see me at the. At the the break, I'll try to clear it up. Um, you all know that animals' hair grows from the head back, right? So a dog, a cat. <laughs> grows from the head down. I sometimes wish, I sometimes wish it would grow <laughs> that way. And, and hide the bald spot, hey Sheldon? Yeah, yeah man. In your case, Elliot, it's growing from the chin, not the head. Yeah. So, what you want to do, like with deer hair, muskrat, groundhog, and, 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 and we think. See how the hair lies and start from this side or this end. It's pointless to try and cut hair from here because you're going uh, against the grain. It's like it's like tiles on a roof. Okay, so so when they take tiles off they just shovel them off, but we're not doing that. So you start at the, at the uh, peak and you work down. Okay, so now then, 
the nice thing with groundhog is you don't have to stack it. I love it for, for that one thing. You don't have to play around with the hair stack and stack hacker. So if you put the point of your scissors in the fur and just stroke it up in a narrow line. Don't go like down that way, go across and work down the skin in layers, like thin layers, about out a millimeter or two. So then you can hold them up, all that hair up straight and square up off the hide, snip the patch off and all your tips are aligned. If you don't do that, it'll be the same as when you try to pull a piece off a feather. You'll have all of the ends sloping. This way now it's all stacked for you. It's all square. Okay, so I want to take a little bit of the under fur out. So you're tying the guard hairs in, which have the, the creamy tip, and the under fur, which is the tan and the black. In fact, there's a piece there that I'll just take a out. Now that has a few guard hairs in it, but it's, it's mostly un, un, under fur. clean out a lot of the, the crap. <clears throat> now the wing should be extend. It could go as f far as the tail. I usually don't. I tie it just a little short out of the tail. Perhaps the, the uh, bent end of the hook or a, a, a book they passed. So I have it to size, snip off the butts, square. Okay, got my thread, put that down, over, pull, There's the wing. Okay, so what you can do slope the, the buds a bit. I'll clean that up let ink her on. The hackle is a full a full hen hang, hang, hangle and again you clean off all the all of the fluff on the base, peel that down, stroke it down. Clip the point off, the tip, so that it looks like that. Okay. Concave side down, catch the thread in the notch. Bind the end down, 
Acompanhos. And each turn you wind, you pull the lower fat divers or the ones next to the shank. You pull them back. No, I don't have my light, I don't have my own face, I left it all at home, but can't see it that clearly here, but I think that's more or less the head closed off with finish, four or five turns. There's your llama. 